What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at cursors for Kinter and Python. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at cursors. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at bitmaps, so I thought maybe in this video, we'd take a couple of minutes to look at cursors. And cursors are just super simple. It's the little mouse cursor that you see here. You can see I've got it set to this uh, cross thing here. When I take it out here, it goes back to normal. And when I hover over each of these buttons, it kind of changes to a different thing. So I've got about 20 cursors that you can sort of count on to use. And these are operating system specific, so they may look a little different on your specific operating system if you're using a different version of Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever. But generally speaking, you can kind of mostly count on these. So you can see here we've got Trek, which is a little spaceship for Star Trek. We've got a spider, a little mouse thing, some box. We've got a cross. I guess that's a man. Uh, sizing, another cross, a target, which doesn't really look like, much like a target, a shuttle, a heart, a clock, which I have no idea what that looks like. I have an idea what it looks like, but I can't say it on camera. A circle, the floor, which is this crossy thing, a plus sign, a star spray can, a pirate, uh, an exchange, and the regular arrow. So we're going to build this out in this video. I'm going to show you how to use all of these. So we've got a file called cursor.py. This is our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So cursors are super, super simple. You just add the cursor attribute to whatever widget you want to use the cursor on. So if you want to create a button, for instance, let's just create a button. I'm going to call this my underscore button. And this is a button. We would put it in root. We want the text to say whatever, something. Now, if we wanted a specific cursor to happen whenever we move our mouse over that button, all we have to do is use the cursor attribute here and set it equal to one of the cursors. So star is one of them. And we'll look at all of them in just a second, right? So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, if we wanted to my underscore button, dot pack and let's give this a pad y of like 20 to kind of push it down the screen if we save this and run it so python cursor dot pi you see we have this button and when we put our mouse over it the cursor changes to a star so really really just that easy so you can do this for most of the widgets i believe also if you want just the cursor in general for your entire app to change you can change the root Right? And we can add the cursor attribute to our root. So we can go root.config and then set the cursor equal to whatever. So Fleur, that was one of them. That was that weird kind of Fleur de Lis cross. So if we save this and run it, we see now our cursor is that Fleur sort of cross with little arrows on it, right? Anywhere in our app, except over the button, which we've decided to have a star, right? So that's really all there is to it. The only thing left is just sort of looking at all of the, the list of cursors that you can sort of count on. Now, there are others. You can import some. It's kind of a whole different thing. I'm going to leave that to you. Generally speaking, you want to keep with these 20 or so cursors. So this is the list, and I've created a Python list of these so we can spit out a bunch of buttons again like we did in the last video with the bitmaps. But we have here arrow, circle, clock, cross, dot box exchange that's those little arrows that are going sort of in opposite directions that's kind of a cool one floor that's a good one for like moving objects if you need to move something you might want to change your cursor to the floor that's that cross with the arrows pointing up down left and right as if you were going to move something up down left or right right so that's kind of a fun one heart okay man that's a weird one mouse pirate that's a weird one the plus sign you might use shuttle that's weird right uh, sizing, eh, maybe spider, eh, spray can, eh, star, hmm. target, maybe you might use that. T cross, you might use that. And then Trek, you probably will never use that. It's a little Star Trek Enterprise icon, which is kind of weird, but coders are weird. And so that's just how that is. So let's loop through here and create buttons for each of these with the name of the thing on it so we can see exactly what it is so that when we move over onto the button, 
the cursor will change to that thing. So this should be really easy. I'm going to start out because my brain is not working very well this morning. I'm just going to create a bunch of counts. So count and then row one equals zero, row two equals zero, row three equals zero, and row four also equals zero. And I'm just doing this because, like I said, my brain isn't working that well and I couldn't think of a quicker way to do it. But we're going to create a little grid system and we're going to have four rows of five buttons. So I set up some counters to deal with that. Again, just because my brain is a little fuzzy this morning, I didn't get as much sleep as normal. So I don't know, need more coffee, but this will work. It's just kind of sloppy looking. So let's go for uh, cursor in list, which is our list of cursors, right? And you could create any variable name. You could call it X if you want, but these are cursors. So I'm going to call it cursor, right? And then if, now let's say if the count is, let's say less than five, right? So every time we increment through this loop, we're going to add one to the count. This is going to let us keep track of, you know, where we are on this list, right? So if we want four rows of five. So the count will tell us which one of these we're at. So when we hit five, we'll bop down to the next row. And we'll use one of these row counters to keep track of that. So if count is less than five, let's create a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal cursor, which is this thing, which will be one of these, right? So the text will be that. The cursor will, will equal also cursor, which is also that. And just for fun, let's give this like a, I don't know, like a width of 10 and a height of like five, just to make the buttons a little bit bigger so that when we scroll over them, there's space in the button so that we can see the cursor better. And okay, and if we want, we could set the foreground color to something different, dark blue, just for fun. I'm into dark blue right now. <laughs> so, okay, so now we want to dot grid this. And again, normally I would not dot grid or dot pack on the same line that you define the thing, because that's always a recipe for trouble except in this instance where we're not doing anything with these buttons. We're just putting them up on the screen. There's no commands on them or anything. So we can get away with this in this case. So let's go. We want the row to equal row one, which is shoot, this counter. So it'll start at zero, right? We want the column to be zero. And let's just give this a pad Y of like 10 and maybe a pad X of probably also 10 just to push it down the screen a little bit and to space these buttons apart. So, okay, that looks good there. Now we need to increment some counters. So every time we loop through here, we want our row one to plus equals one. And we also want our count to plus equals one. So, okay. So this will put the first five buttons on the screen. After that, we can go LF. And after this, we could just copy and paste these. So LF count is greater than five and count is, let's say, less than 10. Let me give me a little space there. So now if we're between five and 10, we want to put that on the next row down. So let me just kind of copy this stuff. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. But here at the end, this is going to be now row two and column one. I want to put it one column over. And again, we need to change this now to row two. So, okay, now we could just copy and paste this a couple more times. So now let's say, ooh, actually, you know what? This should probably be greater than or equal to five since this one was less than five. So, okay, that looks good. So now let's greater than or equal to, let's say 10 and 15. Then this will be row three. And let's say column two here. And again, we need to increase our row three by one in our count. And then finally, for the last five, we don't really need an L if statement, we could just use an else statement because it's going to be the only thing left. And let's give this a row four, column three. And again, we need to increase this to row four, I think I'm going to change the pad x and pad y on this to five just for fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. We probably made a mess of this because like I said, did not get enough sleep last night. Ah, but okay, that seems to work. So now if we hover over arrow, we get the arrow exchange, we get the exchange pirate, spray can star plus fleur, circle, clock. It's terrible. Heart, shuttle, target, 
T-Cross sizing man. I guess that looks like a man, sort of. I don't know. <laughs> Regular cross, dot box, mouse, spider, and Star Trek. And then when we're anywhere else, we have the Fleur de Lis, because remember we set our root.config cursor to the floor. So those are cursors, really, really simple. Just kind of keep track of that list. Those are the main ones. There's probably other icons and cursors you can use there, but these are the ones that are probably gonna be on your computer and so that you can use easily. Like I said, you could probably install other ones somehow. That's a whole other thing. And frankly, it's just not worth it <laughs> because these are gonna get you by through most of the things you're ever gonna need to change a cursor for. And that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.